I was only five years old when I watched my father murder my mother with an ax in a little place called Rosedale in Homewood, just over Red Mountain from where we are right now. We are only a few blocks away from Hillman Hospital, where I was born in 1934 in a ward for colored on the lowest floor. My mother carried me across Red Mountain after I was born to her servants' quarters where she was a maid there. And in June of 1941, I crossed back over Red Mountain on foot as a homeless child. Back then, there was no expressway. There really weren't many cars. There was a trolley then, but very few African Americans at that time had any means of paying for it. There was no GPS. I had no map. All I knew was that I was abused and out of necessity had left two younger brothers in abject poverty with our murderous father. I walked into downtown Birmingham, then by evening changed direction and found myself uh, in a horse stable on Euclid Avenue in Mountain Brook where I found my older brother. He'd run away two years earlier. Never thought that I would ever see him again. Well, I don't believe in coincidences, and the same is, well, less true today. You and I are here today for a reason. You're here to learn how to effect change, how to move mountains. I'd like to share with you what I call the three R's that I've learned over my 80 years on this earth. The first aura is reason. The first thing you need to think about in overcoming an obstacle is a reason you really want to do so. Over the years, time and time again, I've learned that if your motive is right, your goal has a much better chance of being accomplished. If your motives are purely selfish, or if your intent isn't sound from a moral standpoint, you will not accomplish it, or you will be hurt, or you will hurt others in the process. So I guess today I'll say, what is your motive? What are you looking for to climb the mountain? Are you looking to climb over someone on the way, or Will that be the effect of your move? In my decades of running an ad agency, I've seen young people come in and say, I want a career path. Unfortunately, by career path, that many times uh, means I'm going to roll over anybody that's get in my path. Well, that's not my idea of a career path. And it's not good if you mean that you want to move people or climb over them. That's how abuse happens, and it's how good people get hurt. When you're young, you see many obstacles. Everything is so much bigger and so much more important. That's because you don't have the experience. You've got the energy, but not the wisdom that comes from learning. Learning comes from mistakes hard times and suffering. It doesn't come from winning the awards or having everybody congratulate you or patting you on the back for what you've done. Reason is about learning the difference. Sometimes it's a lot more efficient to climb the mountain than to move the mountain. It also stands to reason that good goal setting is key to moving mountains. When understanding your reason and setting your goals, Remember, good goals are set by decision, not by default. You can't let fear stop you from being fully intent on setting good goals. They are not commands, they are commitments. That second aura is relationships. I can guarantee you one thing. You will never be able to effect change, real change, completely by yourselves. 
Good people came before you to help you get to where you are today. Good people will cross your path in the future. And I'll tell you now, relationships mean all in the world to you. Everything that we are and everything that we do. In the business world, programs fail, initiatives fail, businesses fail, but relationships can last forever. Relationships, in my opinion, relationships are the glue of all success. Developing, keeping, and nurturing relationships is very vital in your lives. It's not just, by the way, relationships between a client and the customer. It's the relationship between customers, between employees, between everyone. It's every single interaction at all times. Good encounters bring good relationships. Bad encounters breed bad relationships unless they are really mended. Without relationships, there's no brand, there's no business. A brand has to thrive on building and maintaining relationships. So the question is, how are the relationships at your organization? Do you respect the opinions of others? Do you put yourself in your customer's shoes? Do you foster open communication or do you keep the truth over in the corner? These are all key questions in relationships. Relationships are so critical even in the earliest ages of a person's life. You know, I told you at the beginning, I had witnessed the murder of my mother. My oldest brother and I witnessed that murder. I was five years of age at that time. Bubba was seven. We lived uh, on a back porch there in Rosedale on an old mattress. At that time, we would go behind stores and Homewood and pick up trash. We'd search for this two and three times a week. But there was a lady that we would see from time to time. And that lady uh, lived, I found out later, she lived just a few blocks away from us. For whatever reason, uh, I decided I wanted to go to school there. The colored school had been burned down we went to school at the Union Baptist Church there. And lo and behold, I walked into that church. There was this lady that I would see behind those stores. And I recall her name was Mamie Laban Foster. And that lady looked at me and she said, Shirley, I know who you are. And I said, yes, ma'am. And uh, I said, I know who you are too. But she saw this little stinking boy, a little boy. Bubba and I had, didn't have clothes like other kids. We actually was put out on a back porch in an old mattress back there. Well, I can tell you now, she saw me come into that church, that classroom. She didn't push me away. That lady at that time took me and pulled me close to her. She hugged me and said, Shelley, if you learn to read, if you get a good education, you can become anything that you want to be. She said that. She didn't pay any attention to how I was smelling at that time. No, she didn't. That was more than 70 years ago. But that relationship sticks with me to this very day. If you learn to read, if you get a good education, you can become anything that you want to be. Then shortly after, there was another relationship that changed my life forever. And it was most unlikely one in Jefferson County in this area uh, in the early 40s, to be exact, 1943. I mentioned that I was living on a horse table on Euclid Avenue out there. In fact, my brother and I slept on cots there in the tack room at Stringfellow Stables. There was a man who kept, uh, had Tennessee walking horses at that uh, stable. His name was Clyde Smith. He was like clockwork, by the way. He drove a great, big, beautiful, green Packard automobile. And I would see this man 
Each day, I would walk from Stringfellow Stables up Euclid Avenue into Irondale about five miles each morning to the Irondale Colored School. Each morning, I would walk that highway up there. I would see this beautiful car pass by me. And finally one day, one day, that car stopped while I was walking up Euclid Avenue. He stopped and he said, I see you walking every day to school. You really want to go to school that bad? I have a house and I live close to that Irondale Colored School. I know exactly who you are and you can come and live with me. Uh, I, I, I can make room for you there. Well, that was a problem. My brother was at the tack room at the stable, so I had to get a little conversation going with him. Well, he agreed because I really wanted to go to school. Here Clyde Smith was. I took him up on that, and I moved from the tack room into that house there with Clyde Smith. He was enjoying, although he and his wife, they were enjoying all of the benefits of being well off. Here he was. 1943, allowing a young African-American boy to live in the basement of that home. That era was the era of segregation here in this area. Yet, for three crucial years, years in my life, Clyde Smith and his wife allowed me to be part of that family. And today, I would like to think that Clyde Smith, that relationship that took place there, really was helping me to get to where I am. And I'm quite sure that relationship between he and I helped him and his wife get through life as well. Well, the last of the three hours is reputation. There's an old saying goes, goes, a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. I stand here now with a 363 degree view of the last 70 years. I've seen brands come, I've seen brands go. I've seen people come, I've seen people go. I've seen flashes in the pan. I've seen big shots in here. I've seen them go from driving rags or driving uh, jags to driving well, wang rags. I've seen them in Cadillacs. I've seen them with Rolexes. And then I've seen them go to jail too. <laughs> Be careful, little ears, of what you hear. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little hands, what you do. Be careful, little lips, what you say. Those are words from an old Sunday school song that children sang. But they apply to the greatest people in the greatest companies in the world. It only takes a little lapse in morality for a brand to fail. I don't have to repeat to you the headlines of what you've been hearing and reading in the past couple of years. Do you know your brand? People, you're known by the fruit that you bear. A tree is known that, and you are a brand. Birmingham, Alabama, I don't care where you are, you are a brand, it's an individual, a brand. In Birmingham, well, little old Birmingham, many big names have come, many big names have gone because of reputation. But then there's a bright side to it. Good name will endure forever. If you will keep your focus and do the right thing by others and yourself, you will get to the other side. I've looked at many great brands. My company served many great brands. They have all one thing in common. They have impeccable reputations. They do business the right way. They treat their customers and employees with dignity. They are not big shots. They believe their business and their people can make a world a better place. Each of you stand today. Each of you stand on the brink of greatness. It just takes all of us saying, I can. I love the last four letters in the word American. It is I-C-A-N, I can. I, la I love the last four letters in African-American. They both say in with I-C-A-N, I can. If your reason is right, if we cultivate relationship beyond our comfort zone for the good of others, not just ourselves. If we make sure our reputation is one of fairness, honesty, quality, and equality, I promise you, you will climb any mountain and move it. Thank you very much.